We have the ability to use the power of chemistry to find sustainable solutions for the future. We see it in our water bottles, we see it in containers around food. Plastics have only been around for a hundred-ish years, but they last in the environment for thousands of years. Right now, if you put plastic into the recycling bin, typically this will be melted down, reformed back, but only a small amount can go into the recycling process because as you melt that down, we can only blend in a certain percentage of post-consumer material. So we have a lot of challenges with the recycling process. Growing up, I really enjoyed things like chemistry and biology. Really the combination of those two is chemical engineering. So I went into that field looking to really see how we can engineer biology. Cells are really just a bag of chemistry, if you will. An enzyme is a type of protein that actually enables a reaction to occur. There are reactions that take place in our body and our cells for giving us life. From respiration to muscle contraction to digestion, these are the building blocks that give us those reactions. And that's really what we're harnessing. Engineering biology is really this idea of taking cells, taking enzymes, and being able to, in a way, hijack them to make new chemicals or new types of, of reactions. And this involves engineering cells and engineering proteins to take waste and convert it into new molecules. It involves directed evolution. That was recognized just a couple of years ago with the Nobel Prize from people like Francis Arnold, really being a pioneer in this space. I decided I wanted to make new enzymes, but I didn't know how to do it. Problem was, no one else knew how to do it either. It's a terribly complicated problem to design something new, but it was solved by evolution. Evolution knows how to search through that space. Human beings are still trying to catch up. We can breed dogs to have certain properties, really nice silky fur or big blue eyes. By choosing who mates with whom, you can manipulate life at the level of the DNA to start exhibiting properties that are interesting to you. Well, I do just the same thing with enzymes, only in the test tube. For enzyme engineering, you can think about this as you're really just changing the composition of that enzyme a little bit. I need the most tricked out enzyme that you can get, essentially. Demolition Derby, it's the same type of thing. You have all these different versions of cars hitting into each other, trying to figure out which one's gonna be best and most dominant. We'll take a gene that encodes an enzyme and we'll copy it under conditions where random mistakes are made. At the end of that reaction, you have DNA that's randomly mutated. Then you insert that DNA into bacteria and they're all reading it as if it were their own. Each bacterium is making a different protein. You may take your car, add some spikes, add higher risers, add a faster engine, all for the goal of being able to dominate. Through directed evolution, you end up getting enzymes that aren't functional. Those are the ones that we discard and they don't get on to the next round of directed evolution. Just like in a demolition derby, the cars that are smashed and get removed don't go on to the next round. And you just feed it back into the process. You make new mutations, you put those into new bacteria, then they're beating each other up and growing faster than their neighbors. At the end of the experiment, you've got one winner, an enzyme that does what you would like it to do. One lovely thing about directed evolution is here's a process that nature's used for four billion years. And we can use it to solve really interesting chemical problems. A couple of years ago, a group in Japan had identified a microorganism that can begin to chew up parts of plastic bottles. From there, they discovered that 
that organism did that through a certain enzyme. And that enzyme had really low level activity, but just enough to begin to break down the bonds in plastic. PET is polyethylene terephthalate. It's a type of plastic, and it's a very common one. Chemically, we can start to break down PET using the power and the potential of directed evolution and this enzyme that can degrade plastic. It takes this really large polymer of PET and it begins to unravel it. To be able to engineer this pedase, first off, we started to take this structure of this pedase enzyme and compare that protein structure to all of the known proteins that exist already. And by doing that, we can begin to see regions that really weren't great within that pitase enzyme. And that allowed us to find a number of different point mutations or modifications that we can make in that enzyme. The next step was testing it. So from there, we synthesized the DNA that would be required to make our desired protein mutations and put that into a microorganism. From that, we can begin to test and see how well that enzyme variant works. So we took pieces of plastic, put them into a solution with that enzyme, and begun to see how quickly that plastic would be degraded. And that allowed us to find which mutations were initially best. We then mixed those together, began making combinations of these mutations to create even better enzymes. So eventually we got our final form. We were able to take this pedase enzyme and move it from something that used to take multiple, multiple days to degrade plastic into something that can do the same thing in hours. Current processes with PET in terms of recycling, it's kind of like we're melting this thing down and reshaping it into something else. Almost like taking a funnel cake and smashing into a cupcake mold and calling it a cupcake. But instead, we can actually take this PET, break it back down to that original starting point. So in a way, it's kind of like taking that funnel cake now and going in reverse, breaking it back down to those original ingredients of flour, sugar, eggs, and milk, and then baking an actual cupcake. Directed evolution allows us to create a bridge between what naturally exists and what we would desire in terms of function. On a day-to-day -day basis, we always want things to happen faster, quicker, more efficiently. We want that cell to behave faster. We want it to do its reaction quicker. When we begin to design enzymes that can degrade plastic, it just shows really the power of directed evolution and engineering. We're just scratching the surface of this extremely complex problem. There are lots of examples how quickly nature solves problems, and we're learning how to do that in the laboratory. We could program living systems to churn out lots of the things that we need in our daily lives. We have to imagine a future where these things could be done and figure out what are the enzymes along the way. Some of those enzymes we may have to invent.